the topic God is, is giving us today to consider is, is your family under siege? Is your family under siege? And it's a question you need to ask yourself. Because if you look, I was reading this Nahum chapter 3 and I was saying, wow. It, 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 because the, the, the world you're in is under, there's great carnage. What is carnage? Destruction. There's lots of, there are lots of casualties every second of the day. You just need to work in an, in an accident and emergency department and you will appreciate what goes on every day. You just need to be aware of what's, what's happening in people's homes and you will be amazed at the carnage. It's saying here, I read my version, the New American Standard. It says, Woe's the bloody city, completely full of lies and, 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 and pillage. My version says, otherwise robbery. Her prey, otherwise her victims never departs. So there's always, there will always be victims. The truth of the matter, there will always be victims of war. There will, be always, there will always be victims of the manipulations of the enemy. And so there's a bloody city. The city is bloody. You know, I'm in meetings and I'm hearing the, the incidences of self-harm. The institute incidents of suicide. Suicide rates are real. People are harming themselves. Why? Because the devil is speaking death. The spirit of death is in the atmosphere. And manifest in various ways. We were walking somewhere the other day, or driving the other way, and, and you know, my, my, my daughter was telling me, oh, mom, you remember this? Because I was saying this area, what, do you, what, what does this area remind you of? And there were certain occultic organizations we, could, we understood existed in this, in this area. And she was saying, do you remember there used to be accidents regularly in this place? I said, yes, but you know, saints have been praying. So they're saying her prey uh, never departs. Otherwise, some, some versions say her victims never departs. The noise of the whip, the noise of the rattling of the wheel, galloping horses and bounding chariots, horsemen charging, swords flashing, spears gleaming, many slain, a mass of corpses and countless dead bodies. They stumble over the dead bodies. This is the reality of what's good. If the Lord opens your eyes in the spirit, you will know there is carnage everywhere. And then as children of the king, we will not, we will adjust. You know, my, 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 the, the, the minister that ministered this morning raised a very important prayer point about the, the, the Lord is doing something new. And it's not necessarily, it's not just in the fact that God is something, doing something new and we need to see it. Apart from seeing it, we've got to appreciate the adjustments we need to make. We cannot still be living life the way we lived it last year. Or even the way we lived it last month. The new requires a change. You know why certain shops go out of business? Because they don't move with the times. When the new season is entering, they stay in the old. I keep on remembering HMV. I remember we used to go for evangelism on Dawson High Street and there was a HMV. You remember the shop HMV? Yeah. It used to sell... I think, what was it? Videos. Oh, uh, yeah, music. But I think it was in a certain format. Was it in v videos? Or CD, was it CDs? CDs and cartridges. cartridges. Was it cartridges? Blockbusters. Block no, no, I'm talking talk block. I'm talking H. There was HMV, isn't it? There was, and the logo was red, if I remember. And HMV. Yeah, there was also a Blockbusters next to the same shop. They were in the same place. But you know, they closed. As did Woolworth at the time. Because obviously technology was changing and they didn't move with the times. And the same is the, in the, when God is doing something new, you and I need to make adjustments. I remember there was a time when there was a season in the new and then I realized we needed to pray a bit more. And I remember before the children were going to school, we, they were going to school somewhere way away from where we used to live. But we used to wake up a certain time to all pray. Just because the season demanded it. The season demands something different. Are we carrying our family along? You know, I look and I cry when I see the perception that children are too young for things. Children are not too young. They are spirit beings. And it depend, depending on how you condition your children is dependent on how you allow them to either receive or not receive the things of God or be exposed to the contrary. So I encourage us, 
Don't be oblivious. So he went on to say that, that so the carnage, and then number four, chapter four, verse four is so awesome. It says, all because of the many harlotries of the harlot, the charming one, the mistress of sorceries, who sells nations by her harlotries and families by her sorceries, otherwise by her witchcraft. We're gonna go bit by bit and come to this. So verse one, we'll pick out a few words just so we, we appreciate the reality of what's going on around us. And we are spiritual people, so we, we understand things by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And know that what God is talking about are the things that are in the spiritual realm, which if we leave, it um, if manifests in the physical. Many so, verse 1 is saying us, Woe to the bloody city, completely full of lies and robbery. Lies and robbery it seems to be the order of the day. I remember, you know, you're in meetings and you're writing down what people say because your minutes are taken because that informs the actions, the consequent actions. And depending on how the action will sway, you find you come back weeks later and someone says, oh, I never said that. Lies. And we know how it plays out. Even children, adults, lie. And you come to a point, as you begin, as you mature in your love for God, as you mature in your desire to be, you know, one of the prayers we prayed in Romans 12, verse 1, what does it tell us? I, I so Romans 12, verse 1. I urge you. To present yourself as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is reasonable service. We are, the Lord is urging us, we're not to be like those who lie mm. and rob. We're supposed to be living sacrifices unto him. Because the Lord is saying, world the bloody city that's completely full of lies and robbery. Because they see people robbing, robbing. I was really, uh, there, there's this, um, we get regular news. And they were saying that robbing, that, uh, they were saying the police need to do something on the streets of London. That robbing um, uh, mobile phones is becoming so, the order of the day. Why should that be? But that's the world we're in. The, and John 10, 10 tells us that, you're, that the, you're, you're the ad, our adversary, the thief, comes not but to steal, steal kill, to right. kill and destroy. So the lies and the robbery are the order, the nature of the God of this age. Satan, the devil, is the father of lies. So when, when people lie around you, you, it, you, you can recognize who their father is. And we are to just note, this is the city, the time we're in. Uh, in verse 2, there's a word that sticks out. It says, uh, which one? The noise of the whip. There are people in perpetual torment. The noise of the whip. There are people being whipped in the spirit um, day by day. So it's manifesting with constant pain, constant sickness. Torment. There are people living perpetually in torment. We come across them daily. I have a list of people I'm praying for, and it bleeds the heart. This is the, the, the whip, the noise of the whip. And it goes on until we bring the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, his deliverance. But remember, human beings have a choice. And therefore, we, those of you that are intercessors, need to be praying that the hearts of people will be softened to receive the gospel. Verse 3 goes on to say, many slain, a mass of corpses. The reality is that people are dying in the prime of life. You just need to visit a mortuary. There are many premature deaths. And the enemy is constantly seeking to take people before their time. You have babies coming up with sicknesses that adults are having. Why? That is... The men, that is the mass of corpses that the enemy, countless bodies, that is what the enemy is seeking to push forward. And then number, verse 4. Verse 4. All because of the many harlotries of the harlots. 
You know, the harness, the, the things that pull us away from the things of God are seductive. They're attractive. People run to it. Either people run to it or it draws people to it, but people are captivated by the seduction of the harlot. And, and you might say, oh, but not me. But you see, the things that seduce, the things that attract, you've got them in films, you've got them in movies, you've got them in the foods people like to eat, you've got them in the games people like to play, you've got them in, the, in, in so many ways, and we are to discern, have I fallen prey to the harlot? Have I fallen prey to the seduction of the harlot such that the things of God become secondary? You know, I was thinking and I was saying, Lord, it's true. Many will think will, will take Monday to Friday to be more important than spending time to get to know God. Some will say they were doing their hair. Oh, this hair is not even, oh, this is a, 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 a work hair. Not really for, for Sunday. And then I made me think, I said, Lord, this is exactly what you are telling me. The things of God, because God, God is so merciful and he's so gracious. He gives us the choice to choose him. And therefore, when, we, when it now comes to how we are to, to posture ourselves in, in that which pertains to him, he now becomes second class. The question the Lord is asking us, is your family under siege? Because what is persuading you? What is attracting you? What is motivating you? What is your priority? Because if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have the Monday to Friday. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have the strength to go for those that do the, 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 the jobs that require strength. You wouldn't have the strength. Some of us use our brains to work and, and it tires you. But sometimes the situation conditions want to be sitting down. And before, by the time you sit down, you look at people, by the time you see people in real life, they're as fat as balloons. But you don't know that the why you're sustained is God. And yet, the harlot has its seductions, has its attractions that attract people and they condition their minds to think a certain way. And that is why I was reading Nehemiah, and Nehemiah, I think it was verse chapter 13 or whichever one, where, where he, he saw that people were now buying and selling on the Sabbath, so much so, they forgot what God had instructed them to do. And so he went to start to close the doors, the gates, and stop the sellers from coming in, so that people could have time to worship God. And he said, Lord, remember me for good. The harlot, so... so the reason why where the carnage exists around us is because of the many harlotries of the harlot. And 4B goes on to say, the charming one, the mistress of sorceries, who sells nations by her harlotries and families by her sorceries. So there's a, a transaction going on in the spirit. There's a buying and selling of destinies. There's a buying and selling of nations. There's a buying and selling of families. When the Lord opens your eyes, the Lord, I see people that I see their actions and I cry because I know ultimately where it's taking them to. But you know, sometimes the Lord will not allow you to speak because the Lord knows they're not ready to receive. But the reality of the fact is that the nations, there's a transaction going on in the, in the spirit, a buying and selling of nations for destruction. A buy, a, a, a witchcraft is real. You know, you just need to be be around, be around, hear things, hear discussions, see actions, see the way things are unfolding. You see witchcraft are, 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 is rife. And so the question you and I need to ask ourselves is, uh, is, is, your, is, your, is your nation subject? Because that for me says, who sells nations? So this harlot, yeah, Revelation 17. If you want to understand the harlot, you can go to Revelation 17 and understand the, 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 the mystery of the harlot and, and the mystery of Babylon. It, it, that, that extends to Revelation 17 and 18. But the reality of it is true. It, it, it's just real. It's just what's happening. But the Lord opens our eyes to understand and to know what we need to do. To be, to be transformed by the renewing of, the, of his word. To make a choice. Lord, I will pay the price that is necessary for the, for the now. 
Because we choose to be comfortable. You know, the, the, the silver lining of, um, of um, the pandemic is that we now use media so much so that you can do things just at the comfort of your home. But sometimes it, it brings its own distractions because if you're true to yourself, many do not give God 100% through that medium That's true. because of the game choice god doesn't force us you choose to say yes you have me in the background but you're still doing what you want to do you're still your 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 concentration is not 100 percent for him and so when the sorceries and the manipulations of of the uh, of the harlots manifest we question why and so when we are seeing that when we're seeing the, 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 these things, the question we then ask ourselves, will you keep quiet? Will you stay silent in the midst or in, when you are now observe what's going on and, 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 and answer the question? Because the B part of 4 says, who sells nations by her harlotries and families by her sorceries? You, so you come to this awareness, what do you now do? You're going to keep quiet or you're going to do something about it? This is the new, this is the new, because you know, with awareness comes responsibility. This is the new, and we, we are praying that we see the new, we know the new. But with the new, you need to make adjustments to embrace it. Or the new will just be a mirage, and you won't partake of it. So, let's declare, let's turn to 89 verse 20, Psalm, Psalm 89 verse 22 and declare that before we go into the things we need to look at uh, uh, in this season Psalm. Psalm 89 verse 22 what does it say? Mati shakata are we there? are we there? Psalm 89 verse 22. Psalm 89 verse 22. His enemies will not get the best of him, nor will the wicked overpower him. Thank you. So, this is a prayer. You want to personalize it, yeah? So my version, the one I know is, is, is New King James Version. So let's rise and we want to declare that because we've heard something. We've heard about the harlots and her harlotries. We want to declare that the enemy, the enemy will not outwit me. Yeah, declare the enemy will not outwit me. Nor will the son of wickedness afflict me. The enemy will not deceive me. The enemy will not deceive me. Nor will the son of wickedness afflict me. Nor will the son of wickedness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Peace be seated. You will not be deceived. You will not be outwitted. So, what are we to do? We'll look at some things. Because you know what? There is, we, we are understanding that there is a judgment. There is a negativity. There is a witchcraft manipulation that you're battling against. And it requires specific interventions so that you see an end. So the reality is it's all around us. But the Lord tells us that you and I are in this world, but we're not of the world. So you think there's nothing to do. There's lots to do. I was talking to, one of, to, to a, a daughter in the Lord the, um, the other day. And she was telling me, you know, we're talking about she had some experiences of someone she was witnessing to. And I was telling her something. She said, wow, there's so much to pray for. I said, you know what? Just have the list. The fundamental, you can summarize the, the needs in, along, three times, along three lines. Deliverance, healing, salvation. And so listen, the Lord knows their need. He knows the intricate details. You can put it alongside the list, but that's what you just keep on praying for the Lord concerning them. Salvation, deliverance, healing. Yeah. What are we trying to say? The, the things are around us, so we need to understand what we need to do to get to, 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 to address the judgment that is in the air, to address the witchcraft manipulations, to address the um the siege yeah witchcraft manipulation and the negativity so the first thing we want to do 
we need to understand is that we need to bring our strong reasons or arguments. You need to bring your strong reasons or other versions say arguments before the Lord. Let's turn to Isaiah 41 verse 21. You need to bring your strong reasons or arguments. Isaiah 41 verse 21. Mm. Isaiah 41 verse 21 says, Can your idols make such claims as these? Oh, Let them come and show what they can do, says the King of Israel. Ooh, that version. Thank you. But it's not really saying what I wanted to say. So what that's, that means? That's um, Isaiah 41 verse 1. No, says, no. We said Isaiah 41 verse 21 is what we said. Isaiah 41 verse 21. So is that what you your case, say, say the Lord. And set forth your argument, said, said Jacob. Okay. Thank you. Present your case, the Lord says. Bring forward your strong arguments. Some versions will say your strong reasons, the king of Jacob says. Yeah? Isaiah 41, verse 21. So, we are to present before the Lord. The Lord wants you, in the midst of the carnage, in the midst of the hollow trees, of the hollows, in the midst of the seductions that are now affecting you. You may be praying and you're not seeing the answers. You may be knocking and the door doesn't seem to be opening. And there's a judgment upon your life because of the carnage, the, sorry, the robbery, the lies, the, the, the torment you experience as a result of a judgment you may know nothing about. The Lord is saying, make your May it bring your strong reasons. Bring your strong reasons as to why the Lord needs to change your story. Present your case. The Lord says, bring forward your strong arguments. You know, the court of heaven, there is order in the courts of heaven. You know, I'm privileged to be the daughter of a barrister and a solicitor. I remember experiences going to the high courts and observing things going on in session. Watching my dad preparing for a, a case he was to present. As children of the king, there's a, there's, a, there's a way we need to carry ourselves before the throne room of God. There is a, a language required in the courts of man, talkless of the courts of heaven. And that's why in, the, in this ministry, we ask you, what is the Lord saying? We ask you, what word are you holding on to? Because to present your strong reasons before the Lord, you need to give his word to him. Even if we're praying in our spiritual language, we need to have the word of God that we're bringing at least to buttress the point we want the Lord to help us pray the exact mind of the Father of. So, we are to study to understand God's word so that the matter at hand, the, ma the negativity we're dealing with, the, 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 the witchcraft of pressure we, we, we seek to address, we have the, the word that we're bringing before the Lord and saying, Lord, your word said, you said in your word, you said here, X, Y, Z, and you're bringing it before him. Let's look at Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 40. Another element of strong reasons. Strong arguments. Another thing they do in court, they present exhibits. Evidence. Pieces of evidence. Factual pieces of evidence to support a, an argument. Go on, Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 40. Oh, you haven't even got it. Who's got it, please? Please, thank you. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. Verse 37. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in, upper, in an upper room. Verse 38. And since Lid Lida was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Verse 39, Then Peter arose and went with them. 
When he had come, they brought him to the upper room, and all the windows, st and all all the windows. windows stood by him, weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. Verse 40, but Peter, pulled, but Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. Thank you. So, thank you. So, we see here, Dorcas was, Dorcas had died. But what, there was a story they are told, the Bible tells about um, Dorcas, that she did charitable works, acts of kindness, and, and, and charitable works. Some versions call it um, alms giving and um, what's it, good works. Acts of kindness, other words, good works and alms, alms deeds. And they, they said that the widows came and were showing the tunics, the garments she had made for them. Evidence as to why, strong reasons as to why she was not to die. What will speak for you? What is it that you can exit? What, what exit can you, bring, can, can you bring before the court of heaven and say, Lord, remember this. For, remember this. Let this speak for me concerning this matter. Dorcas, the thing she had made for the widows was evidence before the throne of, of God. They presented it to, before Peter and I'm sure God himself would have seen. The next thing, the next thing, apart from strong, um, bringing your strong reasons and arguments in addressing whether we're under siege or not, is argue or plead your case. We are to argue our, or plead our case before God. Turn to Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26. And this one is interesting because Isaiah 43, verse 26, who's there? I'll read it. Um, has anyone got it? Isaiah 43, verse 26. Isaiah 43, verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. Oh. State your case that you may be acquitted. Thank you. Again, using legal language. The Lord is saying us, put me in my version. Put me in remembrance. Let us argue our case together. State your cause that you may be proved right. Your version says acquitted. The Lord wants us to argue with him. Wow. Our awesome God wants us to plead our cause. And we'll look at two people who did that before God. And you know, the currency of pleading your cause before God is intimacy. It takes being intimate with God to be able to come before his presence and argue with him. And plead your cause. And I, I, I want to make God change his mind. And think of it, you have children. And then depending, and intimacy is birthed on obedience. I'm going ahead of myself, but it's based on obedience. The way you will shift with one is different from the way you shift with another, depending on the degree to which they are known to obey. I'll, I'll, put, I'll leave at that. Let's turn to, um, let's look at Father Abraham, Genesis chapter 18, verses 22 to 23. Genesis 18, 22 to 23. Genesis 18. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Verse 23. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? That's verse 23. Yeah, 23 to 22. 22 to... You said 23. 23. Did I say 22, 23? Yeah. Yes. I continue? To 33, please. Okay. Apologies. Okay. Verse 24. Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 15 righteous that were in it? Verse 25. Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. 
Verse 27. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous. Would you destroy all the city for lack of five? So he said, If I find there forty-five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there, there should be forty found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of forty. Verse 30. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Indeed, I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty should be found there. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of twenty. Verse 32. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. Suppose ten should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. The last verse, yes, so verse 33. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Praise the Lord. So we see here, we're talking about pleading your cause, mm. arguing your cause. But Abraham had the opportunity to argue with the Lord. Argue the case for the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Argue against it before the Lord. And at every point in time, he was causing God to change his mind. Have you argued for anything before the Lord to change God's mind? Let's look at Moses. Turn to Exodus chapter 32, verses 9 to 14. He argued, Father Abraham argued on the premise that God makes a distinction between the righteous and the wicked. And God did it. Let's look at what Moses, the basis for Moses' argument with the Lord. Exodus chapter 32, verses 9 to 14. Yes, please. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Verse 11. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God, and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Verse 13. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply the descendants as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. So the Lord relented from the harm which he had said he would do to his people. Hallelujah. And don't we see here, so, the, so Moses argued with the Lord on the premise that God does not, should not want the nations to think that he, has, he hasn't got power to save was reminding the Lord that if he does what he wants to do, i.e. destroy all the, all the people because of the, they worship the golden calf and make a nation from him, Moses, that he was telling that the people now say that you brought them out of Egypt, but you didn't have power to take them to the promised land, so you destroyed them in the desert. Plead your cause before the Lord. Argue your case. And we see that Moses... In that big, with that intimate, uh, from that point of intimacy, was reminding God of His word yet again. We need to know God's word. You need to be able to bring God's word before Him to enable Him change His mind. We don't come with water. You come to a point where God, we've come, we've gone higher with the Lord. You know, we are. We are, uh, we are, uh, the glory of God is changing from glory to, we're changing from glory to glory. How can you, you you're coming from God, you can't even stand on a single scripture. It is bad, it is an error. 
It is an error for us as children of King not to be able to have a, know a single word. Parents, encourage your children to learn the word. If you need to them to watch telly, let them watch programs that will be dropping the word of God into their hearts. If you don't have time to, be, to study, at least watch things. Let the backgrounds be surrounded with the word. So it's, uh, by, by default, it's assimilating into your spirit. It's an error to, 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 at this time of the new, to be filling your spirit man with garbage. Because it will be dampening the little life that's even in one. May the Lord have mercy on us all. Yeah. Jesus. Have mercy on us. And so, we see here that the question, that, 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 that the, 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 the ability, the ability to, to change the hand of God is, is linked to our, our, um, our, 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 our intimacy. Because at every point in time, the judgment, the, the extent, the gravity of the judge, of judgment was, was changed. And so we can never say it's the end of a matter. No. You can never say a situation is the end of the matter. But if you have not pleaded your case before the Lord, you cannot say it's the end of the matter. It's only the end of the matter because you've allowed it to be the end of the matter. You know, let's look at 1 Samuel 15, 22, 23. Because we, were, we saw that the harlotries. trees, let me just remind us about that Nahum. You know, it said, verse 4 said, oh, so all the carnage we're talking about that exists, it says, all oh, because of the many harlotries trees of the harlots, the charming one, the mistress of sorceries, that's witchcraft, who sells nations by her harlotries and families by her sorceries. Therefore, that is telling us that multitudes of people are engulfed. Witchcraft is rife. But Jesus is Lord. Amen. Let's read 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. So Samuel said, has the Lord as great has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. Verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Thank you. So, we're, so there are key things we want to take here. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness as idolatry. So when we rebel against the purposes of Lord, in simple terms, that is disobedience. In the new, God is, de making, is demanding adjustments of you. And you're not adjusting. You're staying put. You're actually dictating the way the story needs to unfold. Then you are, you're playing into the hands of the harlot. You're playing into the witchcraft that is in the atmosphere. You are being manipulated out of destiny. Saul, in his rebellion, was, and was manipulated out of being king. It didn't last beyond him. And this is the overarching agenda of darkness. But my, my plea and my cry is that we'll be people who are obedient to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. If God has called you to walk one way, at least ask the Lord for the capacity to walk that way. Mm -hmm. Ask the capacity. If you can't wake up and do the things God has called you to do, ask him for capacity, but don't just lie down. If he's saying, at least do your best to be my presence just one day, Tell your flesh, flesh, I subdue you. This bed, you will be a bed, you're a bed of thorns. I will not stay on you longer than I need to be. I will jump up. Yes, because there are some people that their bed is like, oh, it's an altar of its own. You tell this bed, you are a bed of thorns. Me, I will serve the Lord. I will go where God wants. This body will go where God wants it to go. 
Because we have to exercise dominion over that which we need to exercise dominion over. We should not let the reverse happen. We are not, we are in this world, but we're not of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things that you see and you couldn't understand and it, it, it elicits a righteous anger. Because then we start bringing before the Lord things we don't need to bring before the Lord if we were doing what he wanted us yeah. to do. Remember, we talked on Friday about the hedge. God hedges us in. He knows perfectly how to hedge us in. And sometimes we are the ones that take ourselves out of alignment simply because, as we saw, we choose not to obey. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. We play into the witchcraft, the prevailing witchcraft of the harlot. And, they, and, and in the realm of the spirit, they're clapping hands. Yes, we have won. We succeeded in this life. We succeeded. Yeah, the cloud of witnesses, they're there on the fence watching every player on earth. We're like old pawns on the chessboard. But the Lord has opened our eyes in Jesus' name. That's the last one we want to, 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 to address is that we'll stand in the gap for the nation, for your family. Ezekiel chapter, um, chapter 22, verse 30. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. Ezekiel 22, verse 30. So I sought for a man among them who would make a war and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So this is the Lord telling Ezekiel concerning Israel at the time. That he sought for a man that will stand. And what was the, the man to do? To make a war. But the Lord said he found none. They were probably sitting down watching, eating pizza, watching Nollywood. Or watching, you know, whatever they were watching. Watching Bollywood or watching Netflix, they say, or YouTube, whatever. But the, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it, we can laugh about it, but the consequences are dire. He sought for a man who was standing the gap, and your version said, "Stand in the gap to up to create a wall." Is it? Yeah. Or is it? You know, the, the law wants to create a wall of protection. You and I are living in the neighborhoods we're living in for a reason. I so enjoy it when we go for walks because we can pray into our environment. Mm. God is calling you and I. Can you nudge him? Yeah, nudge him. He's making too much noise. The Lord is calling us, calling us to stand in the gap. To stand in the gap. He says he saw, he saw none. Heaven forbid that on our watch we will not be found. Standing in the gap. You are to stand in the gap for your nation. You are standing in the gap for your families. Because those age-old strongholds, those age-old, age-old, age-old manipulations of the harlots that have been going on in your family need to stop on your watch. Amen. It needs to come to an end. Now that you know what you know, now that you are saved, all those things that have been happening to your uncles, to your aunties, to your grandmothers, to your grandparents, that are peculiar to your people, need to stop. You don't just sit and continue and say, same old, same old. This is how we are. <laughs> it's not how you are. It's not how God said you are. The world may say, and the world may say, because the harlot has mechanized and orchestrated, that your eyes are open to know, no, it doesn't apply to me. I will not play into their agenda. Amen. And so, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. What does it say? Koko shikaha. Make him okuse. What does it say? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Mighty God. Mako seke. Hoko chapter 6, verse 8. Also, I heard a voice of the Lord. Sorry. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Hey, hey. And who will go for us? Then he said, Here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. And what is the Lord saying to you? He said, who will I send? And what are you saying? Send me. Here I am. Send me. Here am I. Here I am. 
send me. Not just you, your children. Yeah, here I am, send us. You know, it's us, all of us, because he didn't give you children to, to be wasted, heaven forbid. It's to join this army. Yes. Of all, they said they'll have many children so they can go to the farm and farm with them. But no, no, no. We are having many children to be warriors in God's kingdom. To establish his army. We forgive those that just have two. There needs to be more. <laughs> we forgive them. <laughs> we forgive them. <laughs> we forgive them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Hosea chapter 12, verse 13, and, we'll, and we will pray. Mighty God. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea, Hosea, Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea 12, chapter 12, verse 13. Please. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. Hallelujah. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out. And by a prophet, they were preserved. The Lord needs someone to do something. They were brought out by a prophet and they were preserved by a prophet. What does your community need? What does your family need? Does it need a pastor? Does it need an apostle? Does it need an evangelist? What does it need? We have said, Lord, here I am, send me. Begin to tell the Lord. Begin to tell the Lord that you choose to walk in obedience. What has he called you in? Has he called you? To minister on the streets, but you're saying, Lord, I want to minister in the house. Has he called you to beat the drums and say, no, Lord, I want to blow the trumpet? What has he called you to do? Begin to tell the Lord, I choose to walk in obedience. Tell the Lord that you choose to hearken to his call. Tell the Lord that you choose to be his prophet. You choose to be his apostle. You choose to be the vessel of honor he's called you to be. Begin to tell the Lord. Begin to tell him. Begin to tell him that you choose to walk in obedience. The Bible tells us that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Begin to stand in the gap for your family. Begin to stand in the gap for your husband, for your children. Robo Koson, for your wife, for your, for, for your parents. Bakashekeke. Begin to stand in the gap. Boko Sheka. They will be obedient to God's instruction. Reke sata tata in this new move that we will make the adjustments that are necessary. Mighty God, Shaham Brakasanda, we will not be complacent in Zion. Father will not be complacent at this time. Father will not pick and choose how we serve you. Roko Sanda and allow the harlots, Roko Sanda and the witchcraft to overwhelm us. Father, in the name of Jesus, Roko Ko, we rise to the plow. We rise, Roko Ko, Sheke Kesanda, to the challenge. We rise, Mako Ko, to the responsibility that lays before us. Knowing all Lord, that your grace is sufficient. No, no, that your grace is sufficient. Lord, your grace is sufficient. Father, Lord, we seek to please you and you alone. Makasete ham roko sheke. Roko sandara basanda. Let's say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I choose to walk with you. With all my heart. Give me the capacity to fulfill assignment, pushing back darkness, making a case for your mercy in all the areas of my jurisdiction. Father, I stand to enthrone you, Jesus, over this nation, over my family, establishing the light and the power of your glory. Father, we bless you. Begin to tell the Lord that you are his. Rama Shaka, that you submit to his workings. You submit to his dealings. You submit to his enablement. You submit, Makasha, to his power. Robo Shabrekeke. Father, Lord, we choose to obey you. Father, we choose to obey you. We choose to obey you, Lord. Shahamba Kasanda. Father, we choose to put you first. Father, our families will not be under.
under siege. Our nations will not be under siege. Not on our watch, Lord. We stand, my Lord, Roko Shebrahanda, to enforce your righteousness, to establish your kingdom, to see you glorified. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, the siege, the, the power to overcome this, the siege is absent because our power is in Jesus. Our ability to do the necessary is in Jesus Amen. Christ. Our ability to make the adjustments is in Jesus Christ. Our ability to take up the sword, to put on the armor daily is in him. And so I invite you to make him Lord of your life and be empowered to weather the storm. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord, Lord Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. I make you, I make you my, Lord my Lord and Savior. I believe, I believe that you died, you died. And, the and the blood that you shed, that you shed washed away my sins. Away my sins. I, believe I believe that you rose, that you rose on, the on the third day, that I that too I may rise may above, above the works the worst, of the enemy. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the power to live for you. I renounce Satan and all his works. Thank you for saving me. If you pray that prayer, you're now born again. Welcome to the family of God.